12 minutes ain't enough time. Nah, nah, not for all that. And I just want to say to the NFL, if if the if the game is trash, cancel the second half and let them keep rocking. Ladies and gentlemen, you have locked into Rap Life Review. I'm your host, Ebro. Join me, Low Key, and Eddie as we get into the Rap Life playlist, the hottest records out right now, the new albums, the business, and the culture of hip hop. No topic is off limits. It's Rap Life Review. Listen, Rap Life Review. We are here. Well, when I say we, I mean me and Eddie. But then Nadeska ain't here. She's on maternity leave. And Lo got some sort of eye jammy. I will Yo, let him tell you about people? it. Of course. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You, well, I wasn't supposed to? No, nah, you could always be like he has a medical issue or he's taking care of some personal business or you could have did one of them, but to be like, yo, nah, his eyes Nah, something happened with up. his eye. He, some, got, he got something with his eye. Something, mess, something got, happened with his eye. We got the Meek Mill album we got to talk about. So let's start with music first. Okay. Everywhere around New York City, I was stuck in a lot of traffic. I was rocking the Meek Mill album. I heard the cars next to me rocking the Meek Mill album. There's a lot of Meek Mill going around on this side. I don't know about in your world, Eddie, but yeah. this Meek Mill album was getting burned out here. What's what's the temperature on the Meek Mill album? What do people think about it? Um, I'm seeing mixed reviews, to be honest. I'm seeing people who love it. I'm seeing yeah. people who are kind of like, man, I didn't want all this singing. I started with, when I first heard the Meek Mill album, I wanted more Meek Mill getting to his raps and kind of, yeah. and also the, the the temperature of what Meek Mill, I'm accustomed to him talking about, is dream chasers, right? Like he's uplifting, yeah. he, we're going to overcome, no matter the odds, it's me and my people, we've been through this, I've been through that, but we're going to make it to the other side. It feels like a lot of the tone of this album is, because I've made it, I've had to cut people off. And that's, I mean, it's called expensive pain, right? He's talking about the haters. He's talking about people who didn't want to see him succeed. He's talking about a lot of that in there. But he's also talking about, you know, uh, you know, people doing him dirty over money and other things. So there was that piece I didn't expect, but I should have looked at the album title and expected something a little bit different. But I also didn't expect all of the singing that from him. Like, I, he normally has, like, R&B hooks and things like that, but I didn't necessarily ex expect all the singing. Some of it I didn't want when I first went through the album. I was only looking for the raps. Then as I let the album marinate a little bit, there's a few of them singing joints that I actually like. Um, the one is called uh, something Love, Love Love Train, Love Train. something like that. Love yeah, Train. that's the one. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the album? Uh, I think I feel similar to you. Um, I heard Meek tweet. I seen Meek tweet talking about like this is this is his favorite album. And he likes it better than Champions, and I kind of disagree because Champions to me was uh, Championship. Championship to me was wait was it Champions or Championship? Championships. Yeah, championships. Heard, heard okay, so Championships to me it was it was just that it was triumphant. It was like everything right. that Meek had been through. To a degree, he yeah. had kind of become the people's champion. We rooted for Meek. We were happy to see him succeed. There was a maturity. Everything he was doing with, you know, prison reform and everything was like, yeah. So it was kind of, I was kind of interested to see what this version of the evolution of Meek is. And I'm, I'm still proud of Meek and I still like him and he still has bangers on there. But it was it was, it was a, an emotional album in a kind of different way. Like it was very emotional, but it wasn't like that Kid Cudi emotional. It was kind of like how you describe it. And, and Meek, me, hey bro, Meek. You got to date better women, bro. Like, I don't know what it is about the way you rap about women, bro, but, like, they all ain't out to get you, man. You have way more resources, money, profile to me. You, you, bro, like, I don't know what issue you got with these ladies, but this is a well, you nah, problem. Well, nah, but it's tough. It's tough, though, because where he comes from, and, I, and this is in the music, where he comes from is a lot of dysfunction. So you automatically think somebody going to try to do you dirty because that's what you've been around. I think what I wanted out of a Meek album and what I got out of a Meek album is going to have to, I'm, it's going to be what you said. I'm going to have to let this brew a little bit and shift my expectations. And I have a feeling I will like it more once I give it See, more listens. But here's the good thing for Meek in this moment, right, is we had an expectation Right. And all artists go through this. The same reason Hove said, if you want my old shit, buy my old album. Yes. You know what I mean? All artists go through if they're if they're great artists. Look, Kanye's going through it. Uh, um, Cole went through it. Tyler uh, Kendrick a, went through it on Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Kendrick on to Pimp a Butterfly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where it was like people were like, yo, I just got good kid. 
And then I got to Pimp a Butterfly and it was like, nah, I, I wanted that other thing. But mm -hmm. it's it's important that artists do that because then they expand their expectation. Yeah. And while it's tough in the beginning and there's growing pains, right? It's essential for an artist's growth to experiment and push sonically into new spaces. Now, in, in other music news, uh, we got to talk about uh, J. Cole. We got to have a convo about Wale. And I also think we need to have a convo about Lil Wayne. Okay. These brothers, uh, the, the names I just named, the amount of... Lil Wayne just did an album with Rich the Kid, a full album. I don't know if you had time to spend any time with I it. I don't know to if it. people pay attention to it. to it. I listen to it. What you feel about it? When Lil Wayne announced he was going to do this Rich the Kid project, they're going to do this collaborative tape, I was like, why? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, why, why Rich the Kid? Like, this don't, this don't make a lot of sense to me in the trajectory of Lil Wayne. Because if we're going to be all the way honest, Wayne's been on a tear. Like, Wayne's been flaming gas everywhere. And the reason why Wayne's been flaming gas everywhere is because our expectation for Wayne before the last few years kind of started to dwindle a little bit. Wayne was like, all right, man, we get it. We know what you're going to rap about. His bars fell off. I mean, let's, 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 let's be honest where Wayne was. Go, one of the all-time best, top 10 MCs, at one point, greatest rapper alive, changed the game. Every Like, five years ago, every rapper was a, a birth clone of Lil Wayne. Completely changed the landscape of rap. But the bars weren't there. Lil Wayne fell off. And then he didn't. And he just started ripping tracks, whether he was featured on it, whether his own project, like he started just like Wayne had, you know what it's like? Remember when Mike Tyson kind of got big and he was out of shape and you're like, okay, cool, Mike Tyson. Then also we saw that picture of him a few years ago. You're like, yo, Mike Tyson's loped up. That's what happened to <laughs> Lil Wayne. So, so when he announced he was doing the Rich the Kid project, I was like, I mean, I respect Rich the Kid, but why? Like, you you would think, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Drake decides he's going to do a collaborative project, it's with Future. When Jay-Z decides he does going to do it, it's with Kanye. So, being so are you saying, are you, basically you're saying Rich the Kid is not at the same caliber of an artist as Lil Wayne. They're not evenly yoked, is what I'm hearing you saying. It's, it's an unexpected pairing. It's an unexpected pairing. But upon listening to the project... It made perfect sense. It was like, uh, it's like sweet and sour sauce. Like it, it shouldn't go together, but it go together. And you're like, oh man, I would have never thought of this, but this works. So let me say this. I apologize, Rich the Kid. I was wrong because I didn't know what to expect from this project, but I was pleasantly surprised. So I haven't spent time with it. And now your review is going to get me to go put it on. So we're talking about all these, these new albums and these bigger titles. We talk about Meek Mill. We talk about Lil Wayne. We talk about Rich the Kid. Another project that dropped was Icewear Vezo. And I wanted to give a shout out to Icewear Vezo. Detroit Zone. Detroit and, Zone. And I'm glad you said Detroit Zone because the project Rich Off Pints 2 is available right now. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the two most exciting music scenes right now in Detroit. Another music scene that's really on fire right now is Tennessee. Moneybag Yo had like the number one rap album of the year for a long time. I'm talking yep. about like as far as like yep. streams go, like it was commercial. But let's talk about J. Cole jumping out on these features too. Cause that J. Cole Wale record is crazy. That Poke yeah, It Out record that Wale dropped the other day is crazy, bro. Yo, flipping the vibrant thing too. And, and we're in this uh this time. But and also era. Wale coming off that Maxo Cream, coming off that Maxo Cream record that and and yo, Shout out to our and that yellow beezy. Shout out to our Nigerian yeah. brothers. <laughs> yeah, listen, bro. We're just we're we're in a good place. We're in a we're in a really good place, man. And and I'm I'm liking because I the 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 J. Cole and, and Wale thing is always interesting because I think the fans make it want to seem like there's some kind of like beef, sorta, but I don't think there really is. And it's to see them to get on tracks nah, together. I ain't buying that. Yeah. yeah, just see them get on tracks together and give us like a legit bangers. And then like, and, and while like, we know what you're doing, I seen we seen the album artwork with the flowers. You know, you're like, hey man, give me my flowers. We get it. Yeah, the Ebro's, Ebro's out too. here. 
Yeah, Floor 2 and the Floor Mixtape, bro. He got a song with Nipsey on there. Oh, my gosh. Get, listen to the Floor Mixtape if you haven't had. Listen to it. But, yes, we're going to give you flowers. And Ebro's out here like, yeah, Wale makes the best uh, rapper love songs. Oh, no. But, hey, yo, listen. Top, top five love song rapper all time. Wale. Give me, give me, give me an example. Because LL Cool J is my go-to. LL Ooh. Cool J, for sure. He's number one. Cool James is number one. Common's on the list. Q-Tip's on the list. Fabulous is on the list. Fabulous. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Ja Rule? Fabulous got... Ja Rule should be on the list. Wale got it, bro. And, and people are, I know people are watching right now, and they're like, Drake, Drake, Drake. And I want to say oh, this yeah, about Drake. Course. No, no. Drake makes songs about him doing girls wrong or being done wrong. Dr listen to Drake's discography. Okay. Drake's position, he never is being vulnerable. I'm in love with a woman and I need a woman. It's very clear that Drake, he only needs his bed and his mama. Like, he's like, yo, <laughs> look. The rest of these dudes, like, they falling in love on these records. BET Hip Hop Awards went down this week. Tyler, the creator, uh, received the Rock the Bells Cultural Influence Award, and LL Cool J gave him the honors. Uh, I love seeing Tyler at these events, man. I love seeing him at BET Awards, and I love and I love seeing our top tier hip hop artists show up to the hip hop awards. Like I think Tyler knows, like like as much as we complain, and Tyler don't even have to do this. And and I send this challenge to the other artists out here that ain't showing up. Tyler don't need this. He's doing this because he can, and he can offer some of his uh, 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 reach and his 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 uh, uh, his I guess brand, you know, credibility to uh, something like the Hip Hop Awards and bring an audience to the Hip Hop Awards that may not be checking out the Hip Hop Awards now that they saw Tyler was there. Tyler, the creator, is a story in believing in yourself and evolving and how the counterculture can become mainstream culture. Tyler's whole thing was, I'm an outcast, I'm a nerd, I'm this, yep. I'm that. And he was overconfident in, in, you know, and rightfully so in his place and where he stood. He was confident even though he was supposed to be the outsider. And he slowly changed and chipped away, chipped away and chipped away to the point where now he's one of the faces and what had dropped one of the best albums of the year. Because I remember when Yonkers dropped and, you know, they were doing all their earlier music. And I was like, I don't know if this for me. Like, it was a bunch of, I am fart joke. And the, and the kids at the time ate it up because it spoke to them. Tyler speaks to people. And now to watch his evolution. And I respect the fact that he did the Flower Boy thing. And he did the, the, the evolution of what he was. And then he was like, you know what I'm going to give you on this new album? I'm going to give you a mixtape. Because every time you think you know what Tyler is, he's like, nah, bro. He's a fan of rap. You know what I'm saying? And for the people that, that like Tyler was one thing because he became the flower boy guy to a lot of people. It's like, yeah, man, he he's too good for this. And he's like, nah, bro, I'm going to go give you uh, uh, uh Nah, uh, but he don't want you to, he don't ever want you to get it mistaken. He's a fan of black music and he's a fan of hip hop and he's a, and he's a producer and he's a songwriter and he's a creative and he's got his fashion thing on lock. And look, he took an amazing page out of Pharrell's book. That's the Pharrell yeah. playbook. Now, we got to go to uh, Eddie for this. Uh, I mean, I know what this means, but since you live in L.A. and you've worked with Dr. Dre and the whole pharmacy team and Snoop, and how big is this Super Bowl announcement and what does it mean for the city and what does it just mean? And what do you even think it means to Dre to get to this point, to be? Now, because mind you, for me, I know Snoop going to hit that seawalk on that stage at the Super Bowl. So for me as somebody who grew up in and around this culture – whether it's, it's I have friends in, in the street gang culture or seeing this music in the late 80s and early 90s, not get airplay, not be allowed on mainstream stages, not be played by radio stations, getting banned, like the, all of that stuff that went on in the 90s, all the way till now, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, on stage, halftime Super Bowl. What's this really mean? I think it's unbelievable this is where we're at. And it's huge and it's pop culture and it's 
as earth shattering as hip hop is. It's the number one music in the world. We've been telling you that for years now. Now it's solidified. We know it. It's unbelievable that we're to this point. You remember, you talked about it. Rap was basically banned. People used to like roll over CDs and, and protest. Oh, they used to burn Snoop, them. They burned burn them. them. Snoop was the nump that bro, like Snoop was facing that murder charge. He was America's number one enemy, bro. I couldn't listen to rap when I was a kid. Like I wasn't allowed, man. It was, like Dr. Dr. I always tell people this. The Chronic was the first album that felt like it belonged to me and my generation. Like, it really mm-hmm. did. So, for me personally, and I'm somebody who, I, I, I'm sitting here talking to you guys right now because of Dr. Dre. I work, I, I'm talking to Ebro because of Dr. Dre. I worked for, Dr. Dre moved me from where I live to LA, and I worked at Apple Music because of that. So, to see this all come full circle, and what I want to make very clear, Dre don't move for just anything. Like, Dre at is all. specific and methodical about where he puts his name and his brand. So if you think this was something that's just been brewing for a few months, no, this is something that, and I don't have any inside information. This is probably something that took, that was years in the making. And not only to have Dre, Kendrick, Eminem, Mary J. Blige to come out to perform at the Super Bowl, to specifically perform at the Super Bowl in LA, in no in Inglewood. In Inglewood, specifically an area that's having its own kind of challenges with gentrification, but like a, a an area that's specifically rooted in black culture. Bruh, it's unbelievable, man. Like it, it I almost can't because even with the NFL, like not to, we already let's tell the tale about Kaepernick and Dre's. You know what I'm saying? You, you know there's something going on with Dre, Kaepernick. Like, he's he's very aware of what the NFL brand has be, been and what they have done to that man. And for them to rock nation, Jay-Z and those guys, to get involved and have basically a hip-hop show on all those people that were like, get Kaepernick up out the paint not too long ago, where the president was calling those guys. He had all kind of derogatory things to say about NFL players kneeling and stuff. And for this to be happening, I almost can't believe we're here. You know, for me, it's challenging because I know how important it is. You know, I saw with Atlanta, you know, people in Atlanta, how important it was for when they were in Atlanta. And, you know, I know they only had Big Boy come out, but I know a lot of hip hop in Atlanta. It was like, yo, y'all should have had more hip hop. You know what I mean? And likely if Andre 3000 and Big Boy got together as an outcast, they could have did the halftime show. That that probably would have happened. But 3000, you know, he's in his own space. But I, I talked to a lot of people because at that time and still to this day, I'm not I don't watch football and I'm probably not going to watch the Super Bowl um, because I've just been soured by the whole experience from the Kaepernick thing. And prior to the Kaepernick thing, you know, I had my own issues with the NFL and the CTE stuff, the NFL being a nonprofit organization, even though they're making billions of dollars, and then they switched to corporate, um, the, not having black coaches, you know, just all of it. Just there's just so many things with the NFL that I have an issue with. Um, and so the Kaepernick thing, for me, it was just kind of like, all right, enough, I'm done. Um but I understand what this means to Los Angeles. I also understand the amount of people uh, in L.A. who are going to get jobs or have gotten jobs because of this stadium. I also understand the amount of people in Inglewood that have gotten displaced. Their housing prices went up so high. Gentrification is taking place. So it is. It's not as cut and dry as, yay, hip hop at halftime. You know what I'm saying? For me uh, and for other people. But the truth is, when you look at, NFL TV ratings, when you look at when the Super Bowl came around last year, the amount of hip hop that still shows up in support of the Super Bowl, you know, uh, then you have the the Robert Kraft, Meek Mill reform relationship and them work. So it's complicated. I, I And I understand even even Hove and, and Rock Nation, you know, Hove wanting to own an NFL team. I think that's important because guess what? Young black men are still going to be playing football. This right here, though. I know they're going to... Kendrick Lamar's not standing out there and not making it mean something. Snoop Dogg is not standing out there and not making it mean something. And I know Dr. Dre ain't standing out there and not making it mean something. So I think there there will be a message. And it may... And look, there's also this part of it. The NFL, For the people who like me who don't watch the NFL anymore, the NFL was like, oh, y'all don't watch? Well, watch this. <laughs> and let's see if you ain't paying attention now. 
So they know, like, this This checks a lot of boxes. So, listen, the only, the only other negative I see is 12 minutes ain't enough time. Nah, nah, not for all that. And I just want to say to the NFL, if, if, the, if the game is trash, cancel the second half and let them keep rocking. <laughs> nah. <laughs> It's going to be good, man. Listen, man, it's been the Rap Life Review. Uh, my man Eddie right here. Yo, low key, get well. Nadesca, we love you. Sending love over. We here every week. Make sure you subscribe to this here, right here below. You can also add the Rap Life playlist. Uh, so whenever we update it, you get all the music, man. For Eddie, I'm Ebro. It's the Rap Life Review.